Hi guys, my name is Ollie. I'm a final year medical student at the University of Warwick in the UK and welcome back to my channel. This is another video in my Your Life at Medical School series. I'm coming to the end of my med school journey. I'm trying to recap all of the key core experiences that you guys will come and see when you come to med school. Before we go on with the video, I need to invite you to like, comment and subscribe. It really, really helps out the channel and helps me keep all of this content free as well as all of the future very exciting med ed projects I've got coming your way. But in today's video, we are talking about CBL and PBL, and these are terms that are bandied around a lot and thrown at you when you're applying to med school, but what does it all mean? Med schools throughout history, for a very long time, have constantly tried to keep up and adapt their teaching methodologies as new things become available from education researchers. And one of the key recent developments in this process has been this idea of CBL, case-based learning or PBL, problem-based learning. Before continuing, it is worth noting that there are technical differences that exist between CBL and PBL. They're not really important for the focus of this video. They basically have some slightly different educational theory that underpins each of them but for what you guys experience they are functionally going to be the same and we can discuss both together in this video to keep things simple. And all of this kind of begs the question right why do we go on about the idea of CBL and PBL? We don't make a big deal about lectures or kind of hospital placements to the same extent that medical schools will go on about CBL and PBL. Well I think in order to understand that we need to appreciate that throughout history most medical teaching that's been done all across the world has been didactic. That is, you fill a lecture hall with students who need to learn something, you put a lecturer, be that a doctor, an academic, a surgeon, a psychologist, whatever you like, pop them at the front of the lecture hall, and they talk to all of the medical students for an hour and then everyone goes home. Hopefully in that time they'll have covered whatever they need to know in order to meet their learning objectives for that session. This does remain an effective teaching style. There is no alternative in many cases for teaching very large numbers of people. And it's one of those universal standards. Go to any university across the world you will see lecture-based teaching. But this style of education does have some limitations, and these limitations are one of the reasons why CBL and PBL is now used in medical schools. So let's have a think about some of these problems. To start with, lecture-based teaching is not very engaging. The group sizes are simply too large, because remember, we're dealing with anywhere from 50 to a few hundred medical students. Flow of information goes one way and one way only, that is, that person at the front of the lecture hall is educating unidirectionally all of these students sat in the audience. And those students are passive recipients. There may obviously be times when people raise their hands to ask questions or the lecturer might pick on people in the audience to answer questions, but those will only be an eager few people. For 99% of the people in the audience, they will sit there, not say anything, experience the lecture or the presentation, whatever it is, and then leave without ever having really activated their brains. And the other major problem with this is that it is entirely leveraging the person at the front, their slideshow, their presentation. It does nothing with the experiences, the skills, the knowledge, the opinions, the feelings of all of the people sat in the audience. And there is actually a wealth of good stuff there, but this format doesn't utilize it. So eventually CBL and PBL were born and are now a staple of many, many medical schools across the UK. Some med schools, particularly the oldest ones in the country, have been quite resistant to this for perfectly good reason. But if you go to med school in the UK, you will by and large experience CBL, PBL or some variant of it. So what actually happens in these sessions? They take place in small groups to start with. That's one of the key differences. So you might have eight, 10 students, really no more than that taking place in some sort of closed space. So that might be in a seminar room, for example, or an office. As a group, you will be given a case to work through. For example, it might be a clinical presentation, something like this 40 year old woman comes in with central chest pain. What do you want to do? So you could discuss as a group what history questions you might want to ask them. What specific cardiac risk factors do you want to know about? Have you established their smoking history? Do they have any family history of cardiac disease? As a group, you then may consider the preliminary investigations you would like to do. Can we get an ECG? Can we get an echocardiogram? Are you actually familiar, all of you in your group, 
with the blood supply to the heart, the anatomy of all of the coronary arteries and veins. Do you know how those things relate to an ECG? Can you all read an ECG? Is it worth all of us recapping this together on a whiteboard? If we're really struggling, should we call it a day for now, set ourselves some homework, come back and present next time? And this is essentially how CBL goes, or at least it did for me. You're slowly working through a series of steps to investigate and manage a case. And the focus that your med school wants you to hit could be on anything. It could be to do with medical ethics, it could be a particular themed area of medicine, anatomy, physiology, pharmacology, all of it. But note that I keep saying you here, or the royal you, the royal we, and this is really important, because whereas in a lecture you normally have one authority figure, the person delivering the presentation or the lecture, in CBL and PBL, you, the students, are actually the ones in authority, in power. It's a sort of flipped hierarchy. You have the control to direct and modify the sessions according to your own needs in your small group. There will virtually always be a facilitator, which again might be a doctor, a lecturer, an academic, a scientist, in the room watching you and maybe asking you some questions as you go, but their role is usually only to keep you on the right track, make sure that you're not going down a crazy rabbit hole, which is very possible, when investigating medical topics and making sure you're hitting any learning objectives that you need to hit during the session, but they should not be directing or demanding particular ways for you guys to spend your time. That's not how CBL is designed. And again, as another key difference, you will find that people can speak from their own lives, their own experiences, much, much more. This might be cases that you've seen on the wards. This might be professional experience if people have come from a clinical background. Personal experience, perhaps, of knowing someone, maybe in your family, who's dealt with a particular condition, or you might have a health condition yourself, and therefore you're an expert on the patient perspective. There is this huge wealth of knowledge, like I was saying before, that can only come out under these circumstances. CBL is a catalyst for you to bring out and develop that knowledge. It also allows you to work out your strengths and weaknesses and work to combat them. I, for example, really suck at pharmacology. I mean, I don't suck at it. I pass my final exams and all my prescribing exams, but I really don't enjoy it and it doesn't come to me naturally. So therefore, I was always keen to ask the people in the group who were good at pharmacology, I would say, guys, I'm really struggling with this. I don't get it. Can someone who does get it please maybe teach us all or go through it so that I can try and understand it. Equally, if it came to something like anatomy or neuroscience, both of which I'm really passionate about and really engaged with, I would tend to lead the teaching or the sessions that had to do with these subjects and could keep us on track in those sessions. And that's the joy of CBL and PBL, at least it was for me. It's your time to do whatever is best for your learning. Be the masters of your own educational destiny and make sure you embed the information somehow, because ultimately that's basically what medical school is all about anyway. Embed the information and be able to regurgitate it in an exam. However you do it is up to you. And developing these collaborative learning skills early on is not only really good for your own learning and will help you to pass those exams when the time comes, but actually it's a really good reflection of the multidisciplinary teams and the ward teams that we will all need to work as part of as doctors. And it's also the time to make mistakes because it's a small group, safe environment, and people are there to help you. It is a collaborative learning culture. And speaking of culture, this is a group of people that you will become really good friends with. One way or another, you'll be spending a ton of time around each other. You'll be bouncing ideas off each other during these sessions and learning from each other. And certainly in my case, they've become really good friends that you'll take with you through your medical school journey. On the screen now are some pictures of the Christmas celebrations from my first year CBL at Warwick all those years ago back in 2017. And I think it's fair to say that we've remained really good friends, even though we've been separated by rotations and moving around and even changed CBL groups. You'll recognize Zayna um, in some of those pictures there. We were in CBL together. She's got her own YouTube channel and really good Instagram account. Link to those in the description, go and check her stuff out. But just to round up this video, is CBL gonna be for absolutely everyone? No. Some people just wanna get their heads down, study the stuff, get on with it, take the exam and leave. That's absolutely fine, and these types of people tend to find CBL 
a little bit frustrating, a little bit inefficient, which sometimes it is. There's no way around that, but it does mimic that team environment that we will be part of and it gets us used to taking instructions and following people who have something to tell us, whether that's a doctor, colleague, another allied healthcare worker or a patient who is leading us in their care. So that's where we'll wrap this video guys, please be sure to hit that like button for me, leave a comment if you've enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any more videos in this series. Take care and I will see you all next time.